The project is still alive. It's still moving and going. The project is probably dead. Hello everyone, today we're looking at, would you know it, Detective's Quest. Uh, it's been like three years since I mentioned that game last time, so some background for those that don't know. Yes, me, your average Twitter shit poster, was once a game developer. Or at least wanted to be one. I used to make a whole lot of different game projects and none of them were ever finished because of my lack of skill in not only coding, but also in art and making music. Until... Me and a few of my Discord friends made a small team that was known as Fun on Games. Our first project was a Dark Deception fan game, Dread Duckies Quest. So now that I'm done with that story time, it's time to get into the meat of the video. Yeah, I'm showing you behind the scenes footage of that quite possibly the first ever Dark Deception fan game that was never finished. By the way, I just want to mention that I haven't been a part of the development in like two and a half years. I left the team in about March of 2020, and later the game became a solo project of a friend of mine, George Lifo, or some of you may know him as Yoshigamer57, that was his old nickname. Uh, either way, yeah, George was, and still is, a much more skilled developer than I ever was, so I was happy that he got to be the main guy in charge for the project. Segue well into that was me talking about a bit about your next quest. Um, the TLDR of it is that the project is probably dead. Um. Recently, George announced that he would quit working on the game. That's a decision I can respect. After he announced that, I contacted him and asked if I could make a video showcasing the world what Dreadtaki's quest was supposed to be, and we agreed that we would make the video together. So I'll be showing you some of the very early, early stuff from mainly 2019, while George will show you some of the more recent stuff later in this video. By the way, I will link every old Fanon Games member's social medias in the description, and I would highly recommend to go give them some support. They are the ones that made the stuff for the game that you're about to see. Uh, anyway, this is going to be a long video. There are timestamps in the description if you can't bother to watch it all. Now let's get right into it. First, I'll tell you about some of the ideas, story and gameplay elements that were planned for the game. Yeah, this game had a story. It was probably changed later down the line, but here's what I remember about it. The story would follow our main character, Dread Ducky. Crazy, right? In the game, Dread Ducky's friend that was named Darcy Ducky got lost in Stranger Sewers, and Dread Ducky had to go rescue her. So yeah, the game was set in the future, and Dread Duckies weren't living in Stranger Sewers anymore, and instead they were living in a place called the Ducky Land. Very creative, I have to admit. Mm, the game was supposed to be a 2D platformer, and there were multiple worlds that contained levels. You probably know that in Super Mario games there are these worlds that contain levels under a certain theme, that's what we were basically trying to go for. So the first world was supposed to be the Ducky Land, but every other world after that was basically straight from Dark Deception. So the second world was hotel themed, the third one was school themed, and so on. Anyway, I figured that the easiest place to start is by looking at the game shot page. These screenshots have been public for three years, so it's maybe nice to give some background to them. These first two images were just for the marketing, some posters I guess. The first one was also supposed to be the icon that would show up on your desktop for the game. This next screenshot is from the beginning, I guess I can call it a cutscene. I can actually show you the cutscene later in its very early entirety, it's just text anyway. So it was supposed to set up the story I already told you about. This next screenshot was from a name your doc screen like you can see. This was actually scrapped pretty early on. Uh, anyway, you were supposed to be able to give a name to your ducky, and then different NPCs would call you that. There were also some secrets planned for these names, kind of like in Undertale if you're familiar, that by giving a certain name for your character it would show you some kinds of secrets or changes in the world. This screenshot is from the level selection screen, pretty simple stuff, you can click the arrows to select another level and then click it on it would take you to the level. And then, those last images just the background. That's all for the game jolt page, so let's move on. Now I'll show you some early concept arts. So the first one is a level design concept art made by George. And I think this is a concept for the tutorial level. 
So yeah, you can see some early enemy concepts like mushrooms and plumsters. And also you would be able to collect soul shards and those would be a currency in the game that you could buy stuff with. Here's some more level design concepts by George. I'm not gonna go over everything that's in there, but you can look at them yourself. There are lily pads, piranhas, climbing vines, a lot of stuff that you can actually see in the more recent builds of the game that George will show you later. Here's some enemy concept designs. The first one was made by Tixcord. This is a gesture enemy that was supposed to appear in the circus themed levels. Of course we never got that far in development, so an actual sprite for this was never made, but I think this might be my personal favorite out of the enemies. The next one is a deer ducky. This one is quite bizarre, I'm not sure if this was a serious concept or joke, but I hope it was the latter. This is a concept of a ducky land village place thing, pretty self-explanatory. Here's a concept of, for the moveset of the ducky, some early ideas by George. Another version of the gesture enemy here by Tix. This is a concept of the main menu of the game made by Curry. The menu you're about to see in the build I'll showcase is very similar to this one. I guess Tix really liked these gesture enemies because here is a concept for that gesture king. Maybe it was supposed to be used for a boss in one of the circus levels or something. This is a concept for the mushroom enemy by Emmy. This enemy was supposed to appear in the ducky land stages. Another ducky land enemy was a plumster <laughs> that Tix drew a concept of. I'm not sure if either of these ever got a full sprite in the game, but yeah. Here we have some early concepts for the NPCs that would appear throughout the world made by George again. There were also planned to be some power-ups the player could either unlock or just find in the wild. George made concepts for these, there's quite a lot of them. He also made concepts of how it would look like when the player finds these power-ups. So here you can see four of them. A flight power-up would allow you to jump higher, I guess. Invincibility would make you invincible, invincible who would have guessed. A shield would guide you and a speed boost would make you faster, the more you know. Well, there's actually not that much more to show you, because all of these that I was supposed to show you, you can see in the game build. But I guess I'll just show you a few backgrounds. So uh, here you can see a few backgrounds made by Mark Hound for the Ducky Land, and also one for the sewer level. I think that's all for now, so let's move to the actual media stuff, the game build. I would like to remind you that the build you're about to see is very old and doesn't look very good. This one was made in like 2019, so most of the stuff you see here is just placeholders. For example, assets from Dark Deception were never supposed to be in the final build. This build focused on just getting the game to run and function. So let's begin. So here we are in the game build, finally. So yeah, this is the main menu, like you saw in that uh, concept art, this looks very similar. And unfortunately I had to mute this because we didn't get a permission to use some of these songs in this video. But I have them linked down in the description for every song that was made for the game. Uh, so yeah, if you want to go and listen to them, feel free to. Anyway, um, so in this menu there's four buttons like you can see. Uh, the quit button, it closes the game, I'm not gonna do that. Options menu takes you to a very very early options menu. Very bland, all of these work, you know, I'm not gonna do this now, but everything works. It's it's very early, I have to keep repeating that. <clears throat> and then there's the extras menu that you can actually access. Yeah, there was a plan that you must complete the game first. So yeah, so anyway, let's start the game now. Just to show you what's, what's in here. So this is the uh, beginning cutscene that I talked about. Um, I have to say, this is very... the writing here is awful, and I take full responsibility of that because I was the one that wrote this three years ago. So yeah, just bear with me, the writing is bad, everything about this is pretty bad, so just <laughs> try to survive. Anyway, so this was uh, about... this was supposed to set up the game, you know, the story that... Uh, yeah, you'll see, ring ring. Uh, so Darcy, Ducky and Tractaki are talking through a phone. Uh, hello, can you hear me? I think you can, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I can hear you. What do you want to tell me? I just wanted to say that I'm visiting Stranger Sewers, the place where our forefathers used to live way back in 2019. 
That sounds cool. Can I come too? Uh, I think I'm gonna go alone this time. A lot of my friend Takis have said it's a very dangerous place. That makes no sense. Are you sure? I don't want you to get hurt. Don't worry, I'll be fine. I'm certain it's not that dangerous. But uh, besides, if I need anything, I'll call you all right. Okay, have fun. Call me when you have something to say. And don't forget postcards. Ah, uh, you know I never forget those. Bye. One week later. I haven't heard anything from Darcy in like a week. I'm going to call her now. Calling. Hi Darcy, it's been a week since you last called me. Is something wrong? It's not a very good time to talk right now. I'm currently in a situation. I'll call you later and then argh. Something happened. Actually, fun fact, we never really planned what actually happened to Darcy. So <laughs> I'm as clueless as you are. <laughs> Hello, what happened? Darcy, can you hear me? Hello? And then dot dot dot. And then there's this cool little <coughs> uh, banner start thing for the game. Anyway, it takes us straight to level selection. So here we go. By clicking, the, clicking these arrows you can change the level like this. You know. This build only has three levels. First one was Tormenting Tutorial, second, was, second one was Lazy Lands, and third one was Adventure Begins. This Lazy Lands is the only level that uh, didn't get changed later, so that's kind of cool. Anyway, this level is only playable in this build, so sh let's just hop right into it. <coughs> so the, every level was supposed to have this kind of like Dark Deception style uh, beginning, where the name, level name shows up and all. But yeah, so this this very early, this is basically, like I said, this build was just focused on... this. We both focused to make this game playable and function, that's why it looks really rough around the edges. But yeah. Uh, AMD to move, space to jump, hold space to jump higher, basic stuff. This one, not there. Uh, just your platforming. It's very, very simple stuff. <laughs> and yeah, uh, you would be able to also attack, basically. You know, in Dark Deception, but to do this, you can do it in this game as well. Uh, you could kill enemies and also open doors like this. <coughs> By holding shift you can run, increase your speed and jump further as well. And yeah, that's it for the level. So Yeah, there were supposed to be ranks. Like you could go for S ranks, like in Dark Deception. But these don't work in this build, <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, uh, that's it for the actual build. I can show you some stuff from like behind the scenes of the click team file, which Click team is the engine we made the game in. So there's some more stuff there, so let's let's move on there. So this is the click team file. <coughs> so click team fusion 2.5, that's the program we made the game in. And yeah, it looks kinda bad here, but <laughs> like you can see. So there's nothing else in here, but there's some stuff that don't are not available in the build, so I just wanna show you some things. Um, let's actually hit the test room. This one is not uh, playable in the in the test build, so I mean the yeah build. Anyway, so this is actually a bit different. As you can see, the duck is floating for some reason, and there's no attacking, no running, no holding space, so we can just do these jumps. So yeah. A little bit earlier version here, <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> there's nothing else there. So yeah, this is the X menu. Um, hold on, let me just see the new one. You'll see. Thing. There we go. Uh, this the X menu. Uh, I don't know what these were supposed to be, but we have art gallery, music library, secrets vault, and fun on facts. Art gallery and music library are pretty self-explanatory. You would be able to see art and listen to some music. I actually have those. I can show you what these look like. 
Secret wo Secrets World, I actually don't remember what was supposed to be. <laughs> and Final Facts were just some developer facts, I guess. So yeah, uh, I can show you um, Art Gallery. Let's go. So yeah, there's a lot of um, concept art here. Like this, for example, I already show showed you this. You would be able to click on these and yeah, they would zoom like this. <laughs> yeah, and there's nothing else I can really say about that one. Uh, music library is a bit more unfinished, doesn't really work here. You, you would just be able to select Ah, world, and then the tracks that were used to in the world, what were supposed to be here, that you would be able to listen to. Uh, fun fact, this is so early that we didn't even know what the chapter 4 levels or the maps would be in Dark Deception. So that's why you see restaurant and children's room. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this was before it was even revealed that the levels were supposed to be um, a theme park and a uh, cave level respectively. So yeah, that, that's kind of fun. We just made this up. And <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Uh, hospital was, I guess, that we were right with. <laughs> but yeah, there's nothing else there. And these, there's nothing here, or here, or here. So yeah, I think that's it for this build. I don't have anything else to show you. This concludes my part of the video as well. So now, stage is yours, George. So yeah, George is gonna pick up from this one, this, and just... He will show you some of the more recent stuff, so yeah, that's it for me, see ya! Hello everyone, my name is George Lefo, previously known as Yoshikimer57, and I was a programmer, level designer, concept artist, writer, and even hand developer at one point for Dreadakis Quest. I'm here to talk about everything concerning this ambitious nightmare of a project after Hassle of the team. And boy, let me tell ya, a lot. And I mean, a lot of stuff happened. But first, quick backstory, and trust me, you'll understand why in a second. While Hasu was still in the team, the game was conceptualized to have a total of 10 worlds with about 5 levels each, including bosses. That idea stayed consistent for some time, even after his departure. However, we eventually realized how daunting of a task it would be to create that many total unique levels. So, we ended up trimming down more than half of the game's original content, from 10 worlds with 5 levels each, to 4 worlds with about 2 levels each. Give or take a few, and a total to about 11 levels, I'm pretty sure. Much more manageable than the 50 we had planned originally, right? Well, it would have been, but a panhellenic exams happened! <laughs> to cut a long story short, due to a variety of reasons and mismanagement, some of it on my end, the team ended up falling apart towards the beginning of this summer. After I too left the team, I had a clear goal in mind. To finally finish Rakki's quest for once and for- And that's where the game stands now. <laughs> it's practically dead, if you couldn't tell. So, what the hell was all that about? Why did I waste our time saying all of- well, this. Well, for context, really, because I think it's important to know about the timeline of events before I go on to show everything that was worked on. What that older, 10 worlds version would have been. What the final game would look like if the team, well, didn't fall apart. And lastly, what the game would have been once it was on my hands. I know all this might sound a bit confusing, so allow me to just start off with what everyone is probably wanting. What the game would have been if it came out. I'm going to be presenting it in a commentated walkthrough or overview of the plot, story bits and events and the levels themselves and stuff. <laughs> uh, so uh, I hope you got all that, because I'm done wasting your time. Allow me to present what would have been Dreadaki's quest. Wait, are we still using old school technology like this? Ugh, whatever, it's about to start. <clears throat> The game begins during a quiet yet stormy night in Daki village. The camera eventually pans inside Dredaki's house, where he's sleeping peacefully. However, his slumber would be interrupted by a sudden phone call. On the other line was Darcy, his best friend, who explains to the confused fellow that the two were supposed to go to stranger sewers during the night. A dark and mysterious place, with rumors of a mysterious figure who had been sighted roaming the land, resides in the dark waters. 
The two had planned to go there that night and film a documentary of some sorts to prove that all those rumors are just tales to scare off young ducks. Dridaki, seemingly forgetting said plan, is too tired and doesn't want to go there. Darcy's attempts to convince Dridaki to come along are futile, which leads to Darcy going alone, as Dridaki goes back to sleep. However, his sleep will be cut short, as not long after, he receives another phone call from Darcy. She seems nervous and exclaims to our duck that I just wanted to let you know that I'll return later than I was planning. Stranger Sewers is bigger than I originally anticipated, and if I want to get some good footage, I'll have to go deeper. I originally voice acted this with a sick voice, and it sounded awful, so um, trust me, I'm sparing you. <laughs> Anyways, <clears throat> Duraki heavily disagrees and tells her that he's coming to get her out of there. Said man she doesn't take too fondly. The two end up having an argument, however, it's resolved not too long after. While everything seems to be okay, she stops on her tracks and tells someone to stop following her. She soon gets attacked by the other person, the line hanging up and leaving Dredaki in shock as she quickly runs out of his house to save her. So anyways, the part that follows is one of the hub worlds the game would have, this being the main one. The Daki Village, a place where all ducks reside peacefully and have a good time. The exit is guarded by, well, you guessed it, a guard, who stops Dredaki on his tracks, asking him what's wrong. Dredaki attempts to explain the situation, but the guard will simply not let him get past. He's never attended his training session after all, there's no way he can let the fellow leave without that certificate. This would pretty much prompt the player if they want to play through the game's tutorial, which, in fact, leads us, finally, to the technically first level of the game. Tutorial Trials. This was a simple level, showcasing the player everything they had in their arsenal. They can run, jump, attack, and, later on, dash. There will be signs in the level giving snarky dialogue about everything to keep things, well, fun. <laughs> There's a whole backstory about a war that happened between two races, which led to a whole economic crisis in Ducky Village, and the duck writing the signs is an underpaid worker who doesn't take their job seriously. I'm sorry, that's just amazing! <laughs> Anyways, by either getting the certificate from the tutorial or by convincing the guard to let him through, Juraki leaves Daki Village, heading towards Stranger Sewers. However, the guard informs him about the bridge connecting the two being broken from last night's storm. So, Juraki would have to go through Lazy Lands, an old swamp filled with danger. <laughs> Thus, Juraki is quick to make his way, as he heads towards the swamp. Lazy Lands is the first real level of the game, so nothing of note really happens here. You can climb and slide down different vines, avoid enemies and spikes, get chased by a giant eggplant while riding a lily pad, you know, typical first level stuff. <laughs> but yeah, jokes aside, once Rodaki escapes Lazy Lands, he makes his way into Stranger Sewers. Stranger Sewers is the boss fight stage of Ducky Land, where Rodaki goes through a dark and creepy sewer, eventually making his way into a let's say, somewhat familiar room, if you play Dark Deception. Before he's able to proceed, he's interrupted by rumbling, as a mysterious voice speaks to him. Now, I plan to save the showcase of the game's builds for later in the video. Um, I didn't, actually, that's just what I wrote in the script. <laughs> but I feel like the prototype cutscene speaks for itself here. So, excuse the awful placeholder art and enjoy. Yeah, I know, he looks really dumb, but that's the state the poor guy was left in. That's right, the first boss of the game would have been against Doom Ducky, who would work quite similarly to how he works in the original Dark Deception, just with a few more tricks up his sleeve. Um, he doesn't have any sleeves, but you know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Being able to swallow and spit out the player, throw a ducky bomb that would explode after a while, and even a comically large hammer attack was conceived. Either way, he's dealt with easily, and the whole thing turned out to be a misunderstanding. Doom Ducky was not the one to kidnap Darcy, that figure is still roaming the sewers. So, Dredaki heads off deeper into the sewers, hoping to find his friend. 
However, he instead runs into the figure itself, holding an unconscious Darcy. He flees and immediately floods the sewers, forcing Jodaki to run away. The flood gets real bad, however, as it flies out of the entrance pipe and heads towards Daki Village itself. Jodaki is knocked out by a rock pipe, right before he is able to witness the flood of Daki Village, as the screen fades to black. He is soon awakened by a young duck, who is glad Jodaki isn't dead. However, the damage to the village is clear as day. Now, Jodaki roams the ruins of the village, knowing he failed to save Darcy, and the villagers grieving, hoping they can recover from the flood someday. In the midst of all this, Jodaki notices the same shadowy figure near the back streets of the village. Jodaki confronts the figure, as it reassures the fellow fellow that Darcy is just fine. I'll talk more about this figure later on. For now, all you need to know is that it ends up making a deal with the duck. If Jodaki manages to collect the rest of the ring pieces from the guardians Malak had placed, then the figure would give Darcy back. It says one of the ring pieces is in a place called the Monkey Metropolis, but that's all it knows. Thus, Jodaki's goal is clear, and after a small confrontation with the guard, he's off to begin his quest. Okay, so that was a lot. This was simply the beginning, a prologue if you will, setting up the main premise, goals and stakes for the game. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail about the rest of the game, the full script is available in the description below for anyone who wants to waste, like, what, two hours of their lives? So, have at it, I guess, <laughs> I don't know. Since each world has its own story, I'll be summarizing everything from now on to cut down on time. Also noteworthy here is that once Rudaki would collect a ring piece, he'd gain an upgrade to his moveset being a mid-air attack, a teleport instead of a dash, and a glorified double jump. Just throwing this in here because... well, because I've got nowhere else to put it. <laughs> so with that, we now have... Monkey Metropolis, the game's second world. Absolute chaos is occurring in the streets of the city. The mayor was said to guard the ring piece, however he grew overprotective of it. Once rumors spread about a mysterious figure roaming the city, mayhem commenced, leaving the mayor to hide in his office and protect the ring piece at all costs. Once Redaki brings him to his senses, he reconciles with the duck and begins his own journey to make his city a great place again. He would send away the duck on a helicopter, with this epic build-up, but it would soon be revealed that you know, of course, Jodaki doesn't know how to pilot the thing, and crash lands it into a mysterious forest. <laughs> uh, I, I enjoyed the humor of the game, I don't know. Raging Roads was the first level, and a fairly traditional one, just with a bit of verticality and some branching pathways, in which the player was to roam said streets of the city, having to dodge rogue cars, thieves, glass-wielding monkeys, the whole shebang! The second level was Haring Hotel, taking place in the luxurious hotel of the city, where the mayor is located. This level split into five different floors, each one introducing a unique challenge or enemy. The level's main gimmick were bananas, which upon landing on them will have Jodaki slip around, going way faster and allowing him to make certain jumps. And finally, the boss fight would have been against a Frankenstein robot monster of a monkey. It was the mayor's greatest invention, which would have attacked the player with its butcher knife and shoot at them with its machine gun. Also, I designed him! You know, um... Uh, I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> now on to the next world, Deadly Decadence. Jodaki would wake up in a mysterious forest, and eventually make his way into the one and only manor. The residents of the manor were a cult, whose name we didn't really come to a conclusion on, um, but they were a simple and peaceful community, doing simple and peaceful stuff like appeasing their gods. Their leader was a mystery woman, known as the Major, who notices Jodaki's decline to join their cult and chases after the duck. Eventually, she catches him, and a ritual is soon formed, where one of the sacrifices would be the ring piece. Jodaki stops the ritual, angering the gods, who destroy the place and a boss fight commences. At the end of all, one of the surviving cultists takes the role of the new major, and takes the cult back to their intended roots, a nice and peaceful community with, well, hopefully less religious practices taking place. He waves Jodaki goodbye. As the duck heads back to the forest, some bright lights intriguing him. The first level was called Firefly Forest, and it was a pretty basic platforming level with zero enemies. However, the player would have limited visibility, only being able to be increased by acquiring fireflies, which would increase the field of view. 
so it kind of had, you know, that challenge going on for it. The second level was the manor. I don't think we came up with a name for that one, actually. Uh, this was the big one. A huge open area where the player could explore the entirety of the manor as they pleased. The goal was to collect seven keys scattered around the map, a brief challenge lying before them, a chase sequence with ghosts, a tense climb up of towers, fights with alive suits of armor. This level was big. Uh, calculations giving about, like, what, 40 minutes of casual playtime, not including deaths? But yeah, uh, lastly, the boss fight, which would have been against the Major herself. Originally, it would have been against various masks representing each god, with each one having a distinct uh, a power of nature ability, aka uh, fire, water, earth, and wind. Uh, however, I just combined them all into one enemy who would have used all the powers against the duck being just a possessed version of the Major. And finally, the last world is Crazy Carnival. Juraki was lured into a trap, well, kind of, getting knocked out by some clown gremlins. He wakes up in a bunker, where he's interrogated by a clown gremlin, who promptly gets interrupted by their leader, who explains the whole situation. A heavily abridged version of the story is that the clown gremlins and jesters used to work together, however the clowns were more popular. Jesters, jealous, got their hands on the ring piece and enslaved the clown gremlins, using them for various experiments, pretty much turning them into jesters. And now, Juraki is considered a new recruit of a resistance group known as the Flying Foxes, I wonder if anyone's gonna get that reference, and sets off in a dangerous mission to sneak into the jester's base, the Carnival. After a bunch of events and taking down the evil king of jesters, peace is soon formed between the two as Dredaki is shot back into Darkland through a cannon. The first level was Carnival Chaos, where Dredaki would have to sneak past various guards, using plushies lying around to create noise, distracting the guards and running past them. Metal Gear Duck. <laughs> it's a stealth mission, pretty much, as Dredaki would also have to platform on top of balloons and avoid spotlights and bird traps. Once Rodaki would enter the big top tent, he'd get captured by the evil Jester King and get sent into the Jester Jail, the second level. Jester Jail was unique, taking a more survival horror approach with its progression. Rodaki, after breaking out of his prison cell, has to explore the jail area, turning off various generators in order to unlock the exit gate. However, he wouldn't be alone. This is the monster. One of the jesters failed experiments into creating a clown gremlin into a jester. This level worked a lot like Mr. Hop's Playhouse, where the monster would be in the background and... Okay, I'm not gonna explain how that game works, just look it up. <laughs> there was also a cool segment in the, in the basement of the jail area where the lurker would reside and again would work like the heads from that section of Mr. Hop's Playhouse 2. God, I love inspiration from that game just for this level, huh? Anyways, you'd also have to dodge cameras and lasers and make sure not to make too much noise, and there was this cool sequence near the end where a blackout happens, and there's this cool chase sequence, and yeah, this level was absolute nuts. So yeah, the boss fight, it would have been against the Jester King, and it would have had two phases with some great music. Uh, we didn't work on the boss too much, as you can see, but the music is really fire. Uh, I think it's, it, will be, it will be playing in the background, I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> And that leaves us with the final level. Once Redaki returns to Dakiland, he makes his way back to Stranger Sewers and meets up with the mysterious figure once more. It reveals to Redaki that the power of the Nine Ring pieces isn't enough. It also requires a monster soul. He betrays the Daki, what a shocker, and flees into a pocket dimension of his with Darcy. Redaki is soon chasing after him. Thus, the final level starts, where the player would have to climb up the figure's castle, each floor being its own challenge, reusing ideas, enemies, and mechanics from previous levels. An exclusive gimmick to this stage, though, were the phase blocks, which were toggleable platforms phasing either in or out of existence as the player would have to toggle between them. And thus, after an intense green light, red light section, which was actually inspired by the Ice Age 2 video game and not Squid Game, SHUT UP! Redraki reaches the top of the castle, where he ambushes the figure just in time before it's able to perform the ritual. A fight soon breaks out, as Redaki is successful and leaves the figure injured. Who's this figure? What's that whole ritual thing happening? What are its goals, name and reasoning behind everything? Well, this would have been when everything is revealed.
So, the figure's name is Necrophius, who was created by Burst's only ring piece. His goal always was and is to gather the ring pieces. However, a fight between him and Malak would lead to Necrophius losing, banished to Malak's world by Beers. In that world, he learns about a ritual which, when combining the power of all the ring pieces and one soul, will summon the Hellblade, a powerful sword that will give the person holding it immense power. What started as him simply wishing to go back, wanting Beers to give him a second chance, led to him seeking revenge a strong desire burning deep within his body to destroy the very world he now resides in. So Draki just went to sleep from all of that, <laughs> which Necrophius is first angered by, obviously, but then takes the opportunity to immobilize Draki and finish the ritual, killing Darcy in the process and forming the Hellblade into existence. However, Draki uses his brain and Ducky Jr. attack to quickly grab the blade and get its powers, pretty much turning into, I don't know, Super Ducky. <laughs> However, a plot point is emphasized here. You know, Necrophius was made by a ring piece. Thus, he tears through his chest, pulling out what's practically his very own soul, and it, alongside the other powered down ring pieces, circle around Necrophius as he becomes a god of his own. Thus, the second phase begins, where Dredaki can now freely fly around and has to strike down the powered up Necrophius with a Hellblade. Mixing bullet hell dodging alongside various platforming segments inside the other pocket dimension he opens up, this would have been an epic final showdown between a godlike demon and a freaking duck. Okay, dumb premise aside, I absolutely adored this final sequence. Honestly, I kind of wish we didn't end up cancelling the game just for that sequence alone. But you know what? Oh well. I can just steal it for a future project of mine. <laughs> anyway, after the second phase of the battle, Necrophius is finally taken down, laying unconscious alongside Darcy. Jordaki with a hellblade in his mouth stands over the two. It has immense power, however it will get destroyed by resurrection. Although he daydreams about him ruling over the land, she quickly snaps out of it and heals both Necrophius and Darcy. Long story short, Necrophius gets his second chance in Malak's world, living alongside the monsters and everyone lived happily ever after. And that's it. Well, I skipped over some stuff like the minigames and some more miscellaneous stuff, that would have been Juraki's quest as a whole. The build showcase I was planning on showcasing, yeah, well, Whatever else, let's use that as very roll footage, I'm really tired. <laughs> so, what about the scrapped 10 worlds version of the game? Well, honestly, it was mostly just padding, with the stealth mechanics being stretched out from two levels into three entire worlds. Ducky Lamb was going to have another level called Adventure Begins. Brief explanation, it wasn't that interesting of a level, so we cut it somewhat early on. Maki Metropolis also had two cut levels. One of them being the helicopter ride, which was called Helicopter Hell Ride, and it was going to be a bullet hell level. The other one was Casino Chaos, a level where you would gather up money in order to book a hotel room, thus giving Draki access to the upper parts of the hotel. Deadly Decadence had a scrapped level of its own, being Painting Pathway, where Dredaki would explore a painting world inspired by Van Gogh paintings. Crazy Carnival had the most changes, having completely different levels. The Carnival, which was mostly conceptualized as a, uh, I am pretty sure, like a auto scroller level. A roller coaster ride, which worked kind of like the minecarts from Donkey Kong Country. The Fun House, which I actually don't know what was the main idea behind that one. And the McDonald's Play Place uh, like level, which was going to be just a simple climb to the top of the tower kind of thing. And now, let me briefly talk about the four scrapped worlds. Torment Therapy, it was going to be a mix of a hospital and a prison, actually. Juraki would be injured at the end of Crazy Carnival, leading to him being sent to the hospital instead of Duckyland. He'd have to sneak through Reaper Nurses and, and the Vulture Guard, with the boss fight being the Spider Pig. In Masked Mayhem, Juraki would be led into, into a trap, where the food in the park was actually made by Ducky Meat, thus ending up in a meat freezer. Yikes. <laughs> He'd get chased by a loose bird trap trying to kill him, and the boss was a fight against a giant mech in the background. This actually is the only world I was kind of thinking about returning in some way in the quote-unquote current version of the game. However, 
that didn't end up coming to fruition. Burly Bird was going to be the scariest world of the entire game. The first level was similar to Firefly Forest, the second was similar to Jester's Dale, just with a Temple Run monster looking ass, which was also the boss, a civilization of Trigger Teddies as the hub world, and the third level which was an ancient temple with various puzzles and traps and stuff. Finally, the mall was quite unique. A murder mystery happens and Dredaki will have to look for clues in the various levels to solve who did the murder. It was the mall's manager, of course. And also it ended with a really nice Ace Attorney section, a cool reference, I guess. And lastly, the final boss was going to be a Dark Deception-esque maze segment. But the idea got scrapped because Hasu thought it would eat straight too far away from the main 2D platformer gameplay. Which honestly, I now kind of agree with. Am I forgetting something? Oh yeah, Elementary Evil! It was going to be the most complete of the scrapped worlds. But honestly, I'd rather just keep it as do not research material. <laughs> I just think it's funnier that way. Come on, it's already midnight and I'm up writing this son of a gun and it's 7pm as I'm voicing this son of a gun. So just, I don't know, give me a break or something. <laughs> the world sucked, so moving on. Some other miscellaneous stuff is that the guard would have various different dialogue every time the player would go back to Dakilan to visit him. Alongside that, Dakilan would have gotten more healed, I guess, as the journey went on, showcasing, you know, progression. Originally, originally, you would have been able to upgrade your special moves with runes you could get from bonus levels hidden in the main levels, uh, kind of like the time rifts in the hiding time. And lastly, there were many games available in an arcade. Cool. <laughs> okay, so um, editing George here. I'm fucking dumbass. Uh, sorry for my voice sounds weird. I'm currently sick and not in the good way. Uh, I completely forgot to mention that every stage was going to have uh, five total missions alongside rankings for each one. So the first one would be just completely level normally. The second one was collect 100 soul shards as fast as possible and the secret files which i'm going to talk about in a bit were going to be replaced with red shards that gave like i don't know five ten shards or something i don't know uh, the third mission was uh rescuing or just finding a hidden dreadaki child that was hidden somewhere in the level. The fourth one was a time trial in which you had like 10 seconds to complete the level and there were clocks you could collect to increase the time left. And lastly, uh, go for a perfect, which definitely isn't a rhythm heaven reference and you just had to beat the level without getting hit. Uh, so like I said, each mission would, have, would also have ranking system which added a lot of replay value. And lastly, for the secret files, uh, there was like a museum, and by collecting them, you could see like random art, music, stuff like that. Anyways, uh, gotta go back to editing the video. Uh, thanks for watching. So, yeah, I think my job here is done. Writing about a game I was once really passionate about as my parents are arguing in the background while I'm listening to music to keep myself sane. Yeah, I I can't help but feel a little emotional in the inside. <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, I think everything's done. Uh, if you want more info on the game and stuff, you can do all that on your own by checking the public archives of Dredaki's Quest. Uh, the Google Drive link will be in the description. But before you leave, I'd like to give a special thanks to everyone who put even the slightest bit of blood, sweat or tears into this project. It was fun working with you guys and sorry for being a terrible leader, like seriously, what the hell was I thinking? <laughs> but in all seriousness, as a thank you reward for working on the game, allow me to shout you all out and show what you're all up to. Hurry Penguin, he's been part of the team since the very beginning. He assumed the role of quality assurance alongside coming up with some pretty outstanding ideas for the game. Seriously, you probably wouldn't have even come this far without him. Uh, he has a YouTube channel and a Twitch channel, both of which seem to be in their infancy, so, you know, just go and give him a head start with his follower and subscriber account. Especially now that his Twitter got hacked. I mean, you know, he's earned some good luck by this point. So, yeah, go and support him. Kick scored, or some of you may know him as TV Man, 
Um, he was one of the earliest members of the team, I think one of the original four. And yeah, he was uh, a guy that gave us a lot of ideas, just like Curry. And yeah, Fix came up with a lot of stuff, uh, and the game would be very different, I mean, would have been very different without him. Uh, he helped tremendously with world building, story, characters, provided various concept art and ideas to the project. He was even a head developer at some point, actually. And yeah, uh, Tix is nowadays, he's working on multiple different projects. Um, some of these include a future web series called Let's Star Narcissists and a Bendy and Ink Machine AU called Bendy's Artist Authorization, and also various Delta Rune Chapter 3 concepts and ideas. You know, he, he has a lot of projects, so <laughs> yeah, go support those. And yeah, he's also a great artist, and he posts a lot of his projects in Twitter, so that's in the description again. Uh, Tix also wanted to say that, actually the message is probably on the screen right now, uh, he said that he would love to add a message that through my experience working on the game with everyone else on the team, I had a lot, of, had tons of fun doing it and working with them was pretty swell and just to tell the people to go and support them. That's, that's his message, I guess. So yeah, go support Tix as well. Herring, he is a great and chill dude who helped out with creating the Final Games logo, and that's about it. We unfortunately didn't give him the chance to do anything else, and now I feel bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he has a YouTube channel and a so server apparently, so you know, go and give him some love. Muckhound was an artist in the team, and she was part of the team for most of the early days, and she did a lot of you know, sprites and um, other textures in the game. And yeah, she's an amazing artist. Nowadays, she streams on Twitch. So yeah, go follow her. Uh, there's a link tree that has her accounts and links and everything. So that's in the description if you want to follow. And yeah, show her some love. Paid H L I M? Paid Tom? Bear? Honestly, I don't know how to pronounce that name. I'm sorry. He recently changed his online alias and also created a new social media account, so I'm having to record this again. Whoa! An extremely talented artist who joined the team somewhere in the middle of the game's development period. He's currently in the process of learning animation and game development, and as someone who can relate to this struggle, seriously, just go and give him some support. <laughs> He doesn't have anything public yet, but I'm sure he has some cool projects in store. He also has a Twitter account, but quick content warning, uh, apparently it's mostly muscles and furry stuff. Have a look into it myself, because you can guess why. <laughs> so if you're into that stuff, then, I don't know, be my guest. Still, he's an amazing artist, so please go and support him any way you can. Emmy or Narrowly Mercy was another artist in the team, and just like Malkown, she also did a lot of you know, sprites and textures. And nowadays, uh, Emmy is working on a comic project and also other art projects, I guess. And yeah, she posts a lot of those in her Instagram, which is again in the description. So yeah, go follow her too. Uh, Chaco Chat 2? I definitely butcher his name and say so sincerely apologize. <laughs> he joined the team during late December of 2019. Wow, I feel old. He's an amazing artist and writer, so you know, go and give him all of your support on his Twitter. I'm not sure if he has any specific projects under his belt, but again, he's a great artist, so he deserves your support. Seriously, his shit is damn good. Frost Smile was another composer in the team, he made a lot of the soundtracks in the game, and yeah, uh, he currently, he has some plans with like future projects, but he didn't want to share any just yet because they weren't ready, I guess, so yeah, but the description will be updated whenever he wants to share whatever he wants to share, yeah, so yeah, so I would at least suggest to subscribe to his YouTube channel, that's definitely in the description, so yeah, go support him as well. Tails608 He's yet another talented artist who joined the team somewhere around late 2020. He mostly did concept art and they're all just so great, <laughs> however that's also around when the game started dwindling in progress, so he didn't end up doing much either, but still, he's got a few Dark Deception related projects under his belt, 
uh, specifically the Funkin' Deceptions uh, FNF mod, and also a 2D reimagining of the original game called To Deception. I'm sure if those are still in development, but uh, he's still got a lot of talent. I mean, either way, so just, you know, go and give him a follow on Twitter. Another composer in the team was La Gaming Note. He also did many soundtracks for the game, and unfortunately, I haven't been able to get in contact with him, so I don't know what he's up to. But the only thing I do know is that he's working on Demon's Deception with his team. Uh, that's a Dark Deception fan game, by the way. He recently got a new trailer as well, so you might want to go check that out. And yeah, that's really all I know, but hey, go support the Cookie Cookie team and La Gaming Note as well. Yazid. They're the only one we were able to contact. Their Discord got hacked and we haven't been able to trace them back to any social media. Honestly, it's like they just disappeared from the internet. It's kinda creepy, honestly. I said honestly twice, what the hell am I saying? They were mostly a concept artist and gave useful feedback and ideas for the project whenever needed. I so badly wish we had something to shout out for him, but like I said, we weren't able to get in contact with him. So, Yazid, if you're watching this, um, hello, hope you're doing well, I guess, but leave a comment or something, I don't know. I would like to give a special thanks to Hasu for reaching out and helping create this video. You'd probably not be seeing this whole thing had it not been for him reaching out back in like late July. We've been working on this for nearly two months now, Jesus. Uh, three months now, what am I saying? Uh, he's got a YouTube channel and a Twitter, so, you know, go and give him some love as well. Uh, apparently, he's working on some story and animation projects, including the Wonderverse, which I haven't gotten into reading, but it just looks so sick. Just go and check those out, <laughs> seriously. So, I guess that leaves us one question. What's next? Well, I'm currently in the midst of working on my very own game called Connected Fates. It's an original visual novel mixed with point and click and RPG elements, and also avoiding the whole anime dating simulator stereotype at all costs. Pretty much just an abridged version of the game's description. <laughs> but whatever. Uh, by the time of this video's release, I'll probably have the game's page in the description or something, but otherwise, you can, I don't know, check out my Twitter if you're interested. Please, I'm in desperate need of some motivation right now. <laughs> and as for this channel, I honestly have no idea. Maybe I'll post the odd devlog here and there, but honestly, if you want more content, me and my good friend Tony launched our own channel called Reconnect Likes, where we play games and do dumb stuff. Uh, we currently only have two subscribers, one of them is Tony, and the other one is me. <laughs> So I'd appreciate your help getting the channel off its feet, you know? Also, Tony here has a special message for everyone. So, the stage is yours, Tony, for like, uh, 20 seconds. Go! Uh, um, um, George is a lazy ass and doesn't edit the video. Okay, Goodbye. that's enough, Tony. It was great having you on stage. Anyways, again, I'd like to thank everyone who was involved in the project, like, in general. You are all amazing to hang out with, and special thanks to Hasu for making this video possible. Thanks to everyone who showed interest in the project, and I hope that at least, you know, one of the project's artists and overall just talented people shown off, you know, in this segment intrigued you enough. And lastly, thank you for watching. This video has been a crazy thing to make, so. I'll be thankful if you enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe, all that stuff. I hope you have a great day, night, or afternoon. And lastly, stay awesome.